So plants use a lot of nitrogen, but they can't use it unless there's molybdenum. That's one they use the least of to just turn on an enzyme because the enzyme that does those chemical reactions makes the nitrogen available. I don't know what specific additive would be good with molybdenum, but if I'm going with trace elements, a lot of times I'll do it as um, you know, kelp extracts, humic acid. Okay. When I'm looking at water analysis, I don't want to see more than 70 parts per million of chloride. That's kind of my, my limit and no more than 50 parts per million of sodium. Isn't there like four different types of molybdenum? The two main are the sodium and the- Ammonium. Ammonium. And I'm a big proponent, if they're gonna put it in there, I'd rather have the ammonium, not the sodium one. Uh, do you agree with that? How much does molybdenum affect nitrogen uptake? Well, in this video, we're gonna get into it. I hope you enjoyed this amazing snippet with Harley Smith when he joined us on Perfect Gardens TV. I know our long form content is sometimes hard to digest. So what we're starting to do is pull some of this content out and reshare it with you guys. So please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and make sure to hit the notifications for future updates. Let's get started. Make sure to check out our monthly membership for as little as $2.99 a month. You get access now to 105 members, 2,586 photos, 274 videos, 21 files, 1,106 shared links, and much, much more. In parts of Australia, in Western Australia, there's molybdenum deficiency in the soil. And they used to be a wheat importing nation. They couldn't even grow enough wheat for their own population until they learned about molybdenum and its effect in nitrogen. So they added a very small amount of molybdenum to their fertilizer in their soil. They went from a wheat importing nation to a wheat exporting nation. So plants use a lot of nitrogen, but they can't use it unless there's molybdenum. That's one they use the least of to just turn on an enzyme because the enzyme that does those chemical reactions makes the nitrogen available. Uh, so, well, um, what would you uh, recommend for either an organic source or because some people have been, it's been popping up a lot and just as well as uh, like I've been in my garden lately, I've been coming across chlorine deficiency because I'm, I'm using DP water sometimes, which is pretty much comes out uh, with this just comes out like either 6.0 that's that's pretty much what it evens out to after I'm after yeah. I'm pulling it out of the, the bucket or whatever I noticed that if I'm not having anything in there like what we've found has it recently the langvinite I haven't used that at all but that has trace of chlorine in it but I'm noticing that I'm actually coming across chlorine deficiencies a lot so I've been having to put in tap water within that water at first and then having to go from there or at some point having to put in tap water to get at least a little bit of chlorine but I feel feel a little bit weird doing that. Yeah, they're they're pretty tolerant to chlorine. That we need chlor they need chlorine. It's an essential element. We never add it typically to hydro because it's there already. When you're adding a potassium fertilizer, it's it has chlorine in it. You know, it's on the in the water, it's everywhere. Chloride in the form of chloride. But anyway, um molybdenum and we, what we do in hydroponics is we add it as either sodium molybdate mm -hmm. or as ammonium molybdate and then okay. it's soluble and it's available to the plant i don't know what specific additive would be good with molybdenum but if i'm going with trace elements a lot of times i'll do it as um, you know kelp extracts humic acid because okay. i'm adding a lot of uh, beneficial you know trace elements there uh, that are a little bit more condensed so but i don't I'd have to look into it to see what organic source is higher, highest in molybdenum. I'm not, not sure. But again, you, remember, there's a very narrow window between deficient and toxic when yeah. you get into these trace elements. So you really want to err on the side of too little and too much. Well, I've been, I've been trying to nail it down for a while, and I've been seeing it's, it's <clears throat> I've nailed it down to a chlorine deficiency for me. And uh, the, the second that I started adding, it started going away. But I, I think it was just because of the, the dehue water. I'm, I'm just trying to recycle that water and uh, make sure that the bin is clean and all that. But yeah, nailed it down to that. Eventually, it started going away because it was, no, it, it was yellowing. I'll, I'll tell you guys a secret. Yes, please. Back when I was developing the mother plant nutrient, this is a, a little, you know, nobody even knew I did this at the company. But I, would, I would always add, I would have, with that, when I had some of my organics to it, I would add just a very small amount of Himalayan sea salt. Nobody hmm. knows, and I, didn't, I don't even think anybody saw me do that because I'd mix that up in the in my lab, you know, with some different things. I'd maybe add some more different amino acids or some copper amino acid chelate. You know, I'd kind of do play around with that little formula there. 
and that would be I take that up and add it to my 3,500 gallon or liter concentrate at the very end. You know, my my it's my secret sauce. You know, oh, wow. my jungle juice. It had just a little bit of chloride uh, chloride in there. Not a much. Yeah, that's all, it, that's all it seems it needs. Yeah, that's, it just seems like I needed to put a little bit of tap water and that's all it did. Just, yeah, just a little bit. Chlorine chlorine. In it. The, okay, the, cool. It's the chloride that form the plant uses. The chlorine in your water is, is, a, is a gas and it will evaporate very quickly. Uh, the um, chloramines, though, last a little bit longer. But that's uh, it's the chloride form that plants use. And they... When I'm looking at water analysis, I don't want to see more than 70 parts per million of chloride. That's kind of my my limit, and no more than 50 parts per million of sodium. If it's above 50 parts per million sodium, the plants aren't going to reach their genetic potential. That okay. was that that was actually just it's it's really interesting because I know we're talking about bricks, but yet we see, keep going. Uh, we keep talking about micronutrients and, and nutrients and we dive into that subject, but it's essential. Like they're, they're, your inputs is what will create your bricks, right? It's like, and it goes into what we're talking about, the, the malignum. Uh, there's, isn't there like four different types of malignum that they try to, that they, I've seen push in different fertilizer bottles. The two main are the sodium and the alu, uh, uh, alum, yes. Ammonium. Ammonium. Um, and I'm a big proponent. If they're going to put it in there, I'd rather have the ammonium, not the sodium one. Uh, do you agree with that? No, I thought that, you know, when I first, at the first fertilizer company I worked at where they were using uh, the sodium molybdate. So well, why don't you use ammonium molybdate? Because, you know, the ammonium, they can use that. They really don't need the sodium. And his, their answer was, we're using such a small amount, a fraction of a part per million, that that very, very small amount of ammonium we're adding is insignificant or, it, is, or of the sodium. It's, it's not hurt. It's not going to, it's not going to affect the plant one way or another. Now, if you get up to higher levels of sodium, but you're not adding, you know, sodium chloride to it, you know, it's just uh, so that they, they just, I don't know if it was price or what, but that was just the source they used. I suggested, why don't we switch? They said, it's not, it's not important. I, I was so actually. I, I thought the exactly thing. the same thing you did, though. I brought that that up, and the first time I saw it, why are you adding sodium? Mm. <laughs> like, it sounds like more per million. Yeah, <laughs> is that going to hurt anything? No. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. It's. Um, I'm always diving into these. I'm. I'm a little nitpicker around these things, and and. Um, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I have no idea, but I, I have an opinion. Opinions like assholes. I always say that. And, and I stay away from the sodium or opinions like assholes. <laughs> everyone has one. That's what I always say. And so, uh, but I appreciate you letting me know, because should I back off on that opinion a little bit, you know, should I, should I stay, uh, you know, stay, uh, stay, you know, stand firm on it. And so, yeah, I appreciate that. Because I, I noticed in the MPK, there's you have two lines over there. I'm guessing you developed the organic. Did you develop both lines? They they have an MPK, or did um, did you develop one and then they incorporated a second one after you left? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know, by the way, just full disclosure, I don't work for MPK anymore. Absolutely. I did for a few years oh. out there, and it was a good experience, and I love those guys. So, no problems with the company. It's a great company. I just want to get back to Michigan. And family. But anyway, um, I just the only one I developed from scratch was the was their Calyx line, which uh, was the um, the grow formula and bloom formula, hmm. and because it was hydroponics. The other ones that they have, they they have um, a grow and bloom that's the powder where they added some of the organics to. That was uh, formulated by someone else, a different company. Got it. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, I've done, as you know, I've done a lot of training with the individual components that are in their blend. Um, but um, like we are doing here, but I didn't formulate those. Got it. Phosphorus energy element, plant takes it in and it's incorporated into a molecule called adenosine triphosphate. The energy is stored in the phosphate bonds. And then as the phosphate bonds are cleaved, it releases energy to do chemical reactions. 